G'day guys, it's Jake here. Today I'm gonna to be running you through how to install and configure the Veeam agent for Windows. So this is a free backup product made by Veeam who makes backup software. So basically to install Veeam, uh, well the Veeam agent for Windows, there is the server version as well. This is for Windows just for backing up one computer. You just go to the Veeam download page, which you can see here, Windows Endpoint Server Backup Free and you click download now. Now you will need to make an account. It is free to make an account. Um, and you just basically sign up. I've already signed up, so I don't need to make an account, but you go into the page and then you hit download. Agree to the terms and conditions and accept. Now guys, while that's downloading, don't forget, like this video if you do like it. It would really help. It uh, helps with YouTube to get more people to see the video. So just hit that like button and this will download the Veeam agent. So now that file, you can see it's downloaded. We can open the file. What I'm gonna do is just extract this zip file and now we're gonna run the installer. So just double click that and we'll need to hit yes. So then you accept the terms and conditions and you can read them as well just by clicking on them and then hit install. So by default, Veeam, the Veeam agent will ask you to back up to an external USB drive. If you have it, you can uh, plug it in and hit next to configure it. But we don't have a USB that we're gonna be backing up to, what we're gonna do is back up to a network location in this video. So if we go skip and configure later, this is something I really recommend doing is creating the Veeam recovery media. So what the Veeam recovery media does, it allows you to boot to a recovery media. So boot to a CD or a USB drive and then restore your backup from it. So if we want to, like we'll do that now, we'll create the recovery media just by leaving that ticked and clicking finish. So now it's gonna generate an ISO file. So you can also do these things too. So you can include decryption keys if you have encryption applied, um, which I recommend having encryption applied. Include network connection settings for the computer and also include hardware drivers for the computer. So that means when you restore, it will already have all of your hardware drivers in there and you can also include additional storage and network drivers if you wish. But we go next and then it's gonna create this file over here and we will click next and create. So what this will do is this will create an ISO file which you can then burn to a CD or put onto a USB stick. Once we actually do a backup, I will run you through how to restore the backup using the recovery media as well. So now that took a couple of minutes to complete, but now if we hit finish, inside of my documents, there is my disk file. So you can see there, it's pretty large, 600, nearly 700 megabytes. So that's, you can burn that to a CD, you can put it on a USB drive, whatever you wanna do. So now what happens is we should have the Veeam icon in the backup tray. I recommend dragging it down here so you can see the status. And you can then open the control panel. And it says this installation operates in a free mode. Do you want to install a license file? We're going to use the free mode. You can keep using the free mode as long as you want. Um, there are some additional features, I believe, that you can add by adding a license file, but we don't need it for what we're doing. So we say no. And now we want to create a new backup job. So we go add new job. And then you can give the job a name or just leave the default. So the default job is just job and then your computer name, which mine's win10vm. And then you can select the backup mode. So you can do the entire computer. You can do individual files. So let's go an entire computer backup first. And then you pick where you want to do it. So if you wanted to do local storage, that's like what it prompted us for before when it was gonna automatically create a backup job. So that will back up to a USB stick or a USB drive, ESATA, some sort of external hard drive that you physically plug into the computer. 
If you're gonna do that, I recommend using multiple drives. This way, you are protecting your drives from like an encryption attack or something like that. And you can unplug the drive, take it home with you from work or wherever, you know, keep it somewhere else. So that also protects you from something like a fire or theft or flood or something like that. It's always good to have an off-site backup. Um, you can also pick a shared folder, a Veeam backup repository media. So if you have Veeam backup and replication, you can use the Veeam endpoint to backup to your repository media. What we're gonna do though is a shared folder. Um, and you can also do OneDrive, which is pretty obvious. So we're gonna to go to a shared folder and we're gonna browse for this shared folder, which it should did not find. Let's go C1 uh, DC1. Oh, my numlock's not on. So we're gonna to go to DC1. See if I can browse it. For some reason, I don't think network discoveries on on my backup media location. I'll just make sure this is correct and that I can browse that. Yes. So this is on my network. I'm backing up to a network location, which is there. And if you require credentials, you can put it there. Um, here you can say how long you want to keep your backups for. So if you want uh, seven days, excluding days with no backups, or we can go into the advanced options here. And we can say we want to create backups periodically, full backups on the first day of the month or selected days. You can also say um, if you want storage level corruption guard. So this will do a health check on your backup as it does it. And you can also do defrag and compress. So you can look and defrag your compress on these days. We can also do your storage here and the compression level. So if we want extreme compression or no compression, and we will do storage optimization as well. And this is the good part. So this is the part I really like is that you can encrypt your backup file. So if you are backing up to a USB drive or a network location and you encrypt the backup, that means even if somebody gets your USB drive, the backup is encrypted and people won't be able to access it. So we can add a password. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to have extreme compression, extreme compression and we're going to hit OK. So we're going to do seven days and go next and then you can set a schedule so you can say you want to do it every day you want to do it when your computer's powered on you want to so if your computer's powered off at the time that the backup runs you can make it back up when your computer turns back on and you can also specify the computer to shut down once the backup's done or sleep so we're going to keep my computer running and you can also say like so if you are backing up to a usb drive if you tick this you can also say that your when your backup is connected, do a backup. So you plug in your backup drive, Veeam will automatically detect that backup drive is plugged in and then it will start doing the backup. So we're not gonna do that, we're just gonna do it at 12.30 a.m. every day. And it'll tell you that wake up timers are not supported, so daily backup will be unable to wake up your computer from sleep, which that's fine. And then we can run the backup job once we're finished, which I want to do. So then hit go, and now it's gonna start doing a backup. So this will probably take a little while because my computer currently has, what's that, about 30 gig of data on it. So we'll just let that backup run. So once the backup's finished, you will see here that the last backup ran eight minutes ago. It can tell you here that yes, it was successful, it was green which is good, green for good, red for bad. If it fails, it will be red, but green for good. We've backed up 14.7 gig of data, so it has compressed that data a fair bit because as you can see here, we've got 31 gig of used space. So 31 gig compressed down to 14.7, which is good because then you can keep more backups on your storage. So from here now, what we can do is we can actually restore both the full image or the file uh, at the or restore from the file level. So if we right click on here and go restore, 
we can go individual files or entire volumes. So first what we're going to do is run through an individual file restore. So if I click that, we can then say network storage because that's where we backed up to. If we were backing up to a USB drive, it would have been local storage and you would have been able to browse to select that USB drive. So now we select where we're restoring from, which as you could see before, when we actually did the configuration, we've got some similar options here. We backed up to a shared folder. So if we do the same thing here, and then oh, if I browse, which it's not going to let me find it. So we can see here's the backup job. So if we go to here, and select next. It will then search this shared folder for backups and we can see here's the backup. So we've done one backup and the time. So there's the backup job. If you had multiple backups, so if you've ran that backup daily for multiple days, you'll have multiple options so you can back up from different backups. Uh, you can restore from different backups. So, you know, say you wanted to restore a file from a week ago that was deleted a week ago, you can go there and restore that file. So basically we hit next, next, and then we open. So what it's gonna do now is import the backup. And then we're gonna be able to navigate these folders and actually select a file to restore. So if we restore that and keep, Let's actually delete this whole folder. So now we've deleted that folder. And now if we restore this folder, there it is. So now we have restored from the backup. So what I'll do now is I've copied that recovery media already. So what I'll do is I will mount the ISO for the recovery media. which is here, apply. And what we'll do is just delete all of this stuff, continue, continue. And we might change our background image. Oh, Windows isn't activated. Anyway, we've deleted some files off the desktop. We might even delete all that stuff. So now what we'll do is we will boot to our recovery media. So I'm currently using a virtual machine. If you were doing it with a physical machine, you would need to press whatever button it is with the boot options when you boot and, um, and then boot to the recovery media. So, you know, you select might be F12 and then you pick boot to a USB or boot to a CD. Uh, continue. press any key to boot from the CD. So now I've pressed any key to boot from that CD. And now as you can see, the Veeam recovery environment is initializing. So what we're gonna do is a bare metal restore. Yeah, bare metal restore. And we will select network storage to a shared folder, which is the same as what we did before. DC1 backup next I will need some credentials because it's a domain joined computer and here we go so we can see the backup and because it's encrypted it's going to ask us for the password so you notice before it didn't ask us from the for the password that was because we we're restoring it from the computer that already has those encryption keys stored in the backup software. So when we're doing it in this environment, the encryption keys are not stored. If we made a, if when we were making the recovery media, we chose to store the encryption keys, it wouldn't ask us for this uh, encryption key or the password. But basically we just type in the password and it would decrypt the media. And here we go, we can see we've got the Win10 VM, we've got one restore point. 
Now if we go next and we want to restore the entire computer and we'll restore it. So now what it's going to do is it's going to be grabbing that backup folder from the network location and it's going to start restoring. So you can see here we go, we're restoring 128 gig drive and it will just continue on and run that restore. So once again, if you were restoring from a hard drive, you would select hard drive, not network location or a whatever it is there, you know, local storage, sorry. So you would plug in your USB drive, you'd select local storage, and then you would do the same process. You'd need to type in your encryption key. So once again, I can't stress more than enough that the encryption keys are important because what happens if you lose your backup drive and now all of your data is in the hands of somebody who randomly picked up your backup drive or has stolen it or something like that. So, you know, data breaches are important. Just think of this security stuff. It is important and it does happen. Things do get breached or data does, you know, get breached. People lose their data all the time and you really don't want to lose sensitive customer data or even your own personal data. So now that the restore is finished, we can see the steps that it took. And if anything failed, you won't have a green tick. You'll have a red X, but hopefully everything does not fail. If something fails, you need to troubleshoot it. So now if we hit finish, it's going to say the restore has been completed. Do you want to reboot your computer now? And yes, I do. This time I am not going to press any key to get into win uh, to boot to the CD. I'm going to boot straight to my computer here on my virtual machine. So if I log in, why that? There we go, full screen. So now I've logged in, you can see these files are back. So the restore worked. So this is quite good. The bare metal restore is quite good for if you have an operating system failure or hard drive failure or something. Say your hard drive dies, you can just bang in a new hard drive, do a bare metal restore and now you're on. So we'll run through a couple of other things that you can do here too. So you can also set email notifications. So what you can do is set up email notifications. So every time there is a backup, you get a backup report. So if you want to make sure that your backups are running and they are successful, because sometimes things do fail, you can get an email backup notification. And then if it fails, you'll get the email or if it doesn't even run, you won't get an email and you'll go, Oh, why didn't I get an email for my backup? So to do that, you basically tick this and then you go configure and test. You put in your email address, your password, and what you want the job name to be, and you specify when you're gonna get notified. So are you only gonna get emails when there's a warning on an error, or do you want emails when there's success? So you just tick, untick, do whatever you wanna do, and in here you can set up your SMTP server. I'm not gonna do that at the moment, pretty basic if you know how to set up your emails you just put in your email address your password SMTP server and whether it uses SSL and what port it sends on anyway guys once again don't forget to like and subscribe to see more and we'll see you in the next video